Okay. Hey, everybody. It's me again, Coach Crystal. And we are here with one of our amazing clients, Shirley Collado. Um, once in a while, I ask clients to jump on and just have a conversation with me about how their experience was in the Steps and Stages community or is in the community and was during the process of their vision work. So Shirley, welcome. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your vision. Thank you, Crystal. It's an honor to be here and I'm happy to pay it forward. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people are often thinking about coaching and they want to put it in a specific vein of their life, right? There, there's executive coaching, there's financial coaching. And when we talk about vision coaching, I think people have a hard time thinking about how the holistic view of a vision can affect their day-to-day -day lives. Can you talk a little bit about what your process was like in understanding how the four quadrants of your life went together or even how to start visioning for a holistic life? Sure, sure. That's such a rich question. I, you know, I should say, you know, for the for listeners, I'm a clinical psychologist by training. Um, you know, have been in education, higher education administration for a long time, mm -hmm. and so um, and have a full, full and busy life. And so, when I first approached this, I was thinking I'm at a major crossroads in my life. I'm thinking a lot about the need for integration you know, that I'm very good at compartmentalizing. I'm very good at high achieving in certain categories, but the pieces just weren't fitting together. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, that became really obvious, uh, more obvious in ways that I hadn't anticipated. So I was really excited when you and I talked about visioning and dream building. And it became very clear to me that in my biggest dream and vision, I wanted to integrate this life's work Right. You know, my day job, my job was not just a job. It was life's work. And and there were all these other components, my life, my marriage, my friends, my health, my body, my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so frankly, you know, I, and I'm a big proponent of therapy and, you know, um, reflection and self-awareness and health and wellness. But um, this allowed me to really have language and have permission to bring all these pieces together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, permission is a big word, I think, in this process. And a lot of it surely comes between the, um, the duality of permission and trust, right? And when we think about trust for ourselves, we know that it builds our confidence because we're actually keeping our commitments with ourselves rather than building our integrity with other people. Can you talk a little bit about how this process for you helped you tune into trusting yourself or your intuition? I think a lot of it is, you know, look, you're an incredible coach um, and a, a courageous person. And, you know, I believe in living life authentically. You know, I don't really, I, 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 although I've negotiated my identity in a variety of spaces, I feel like I, how I show up is pretty consistent. Yeah. And so I think that a big part of my discovery was you reflecting back for me some of the things that were very present in our conversations. And then uh, honestly, some things that weren't that I wasn't aware of mm -hmm. um, and bringing the material that I was reading, that I was listening to, that we were talking about. And so um, our time together gave me a, a mirror in, in a different way. Yeah. And, um, and I felt like I had, a space that felt very solid, that was a brave space for me to name things that I don't always feel like I get to name in all parts of my life. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that was a big part of it, I I, I think. And um, imagining other possibilities, you know, that I haven't really given myself permission to do, even, you know, in a very accomplished career and life and a very loving family and marriage, um, uh, I felt like I, I was able to see different vantage points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before, when you thought about possibility, you know, many people like to think of their strategy as possibility or their plan as a vision. Can you help some people out there just in your own words, dismantle the two just because of, you know, you had already wanted life. It wasn't about that. Right. So kind of dismantling the two. Yeah. You know, I'm a good planner. <laughs> Uh, I am a good executor of things. Um, I'm ambitious. I have a big appetite for life. 
Um, and you know, everything that I do, I like to do intensely. And so, you know, I've had lots of lists in my life and some of them were, uh, put upon me (laughs) with enormous responsibilities at a very young age, Mm -hmm. uh, being the youngest person in the room, largely throughout my career, you know, Mm -hmm. enormous responsibilities that were very consistent with being a parentified kid. So I was good at lists. I was good at big responsibilities on these shoulders. And um, I think when you're able to do that and be productive, or you know how to lead a team, or you know how to uh, mobilize change, you, you can have people follow you, right? Mm-hmm. You those things feel very busy and like you're accomplishing things. Yeah. And I guess the difference is when I really started paying attention to visioning, dream building, realizing what was inside me. It was like it's hard to describe, but it's almost like I started developing the ability to see what was between those lines on my list. Mm, mm. that were were behind the scenes that were deep in there. Mm. And I just wasn't putting Shirley first. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was like this big vision of educational justice, being a servant leader, being super responsible, being the daughter of immigrants that get the job done and, and see things through, you know, these things that I was carrying. And there were other wishes there in my vision that I just didn't see. Yeah. or didn't give myself permission to see, or people were counting on me for all this other stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that I actually didn't get to see the stuff for me. Yeah, And I think that was when I started kind of putting it all together, you know, because people describe me as she's visionary, you know, I can, I can like say, you know, big picture, let's go there. We're going there. Yeah. But when it came to looking in the mirror, I was like, where do you really, you know, and, and like you said, you know, I kind of, I've done a lot of the things that I thought I would do and a lot of things that I never imagined doing that have been amazing. Yet there was something at that crossroads when I started doing work with you that I knew was there that I didn't have access to. Uh, There was something inside of me that just wasn't coming to life, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though I love the work that I've done, right? It just wasn't enough anymore. So... Well, thank you. I mean, I think it's true that many of us get to a place where we do all the right things, we build the life that we imagined, but then we don't let our imagination go any further, right? And so here we're really big on you can be grateful and still want more. And the want is not about greed. The want is about how much more of me can I figure out or find out or have access to, right? And so, Shirley, I mean, it's one of those big questions that we always think about, but, you know, what was the hardest part of the process for you and what's next? Mm. I think the hardest part of the process was realizing that even though my life was full, I never really made most of my decisions for Shirley. It was for serving. It was for justice. It was for family. It was for being a role model to people who are not seen Mm -hmm. uh, and often heard in the spaces that I've occupied. Um, It was what people believed in and wanted in me. And the hardest part was actually realizing it was so simple, but I, and my, and my husband, the love of my life, you know, reflected that to me, you know, when I, when I would talk with him about the work that I was doing with you. And he was yeah. over the moon that I was giving myself this space that it, it was somehow like this big luxury to me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it shouldn't have been right. Right. But it was this moment where uh, and he reflected, I remember the moment where you and I talked about this when he said, it's OK to make a decision for Shirley. It's OK to want more for Shirley. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I think about that as a woman of color, as a first generation college student, mm-hmm. as, you know, the daughter of people who were not born in this country, right. and many of the things that I've represented in my doing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was a part of me that was quite sad when I came to the realization that, you know, here I am almost 50, and mm-hmm. I now am 50, right? Mm-hmm. Here I am at this point in my life. and most decisions haven't really been about me. And I'm proud that I have, you know, given so much of myself in the work. Yeah. But uh, I got to the point where it was, it was come, you know, it was a, at a cost. 
right? Right. So, so to my body, to my, you know, what I wanted to get up for and do every day. Mm -hmm. um, and that it wasn't selfish. It wasn't excessive. It wasn't too big to yeah. dream about things that I needed for, for me. Yeah. So, um, and look, you know, what's next, I guess, to get to that point is, you know, I, I say all of this, but I haven't completely arrived, you know, that this is a process. I, yeah, you know, yes. to, to share a little bit with the, with the viewers, you know, when I did work with you, Crystal, I was at a major crossroads in my career and life. Mm -hmm. And I had already done phenomenal things, yeah. but, you know, again, they, they it was, it was time to look at very deeply inside me, what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the decisions moved me across the country. It uh, enhanced my partnership with, you know, my husband who I met later in life, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to take big steps for us to be in the same place, um, mm -hmm. uh, to think about my body and my health in a different way. And, mm -hmm. Um, to be a little more vulnerable and gentle with myself, you know, forgiving when I wasn't doing everything intensely and perfectly. So, you know, what, what's next for me is, you know, I kind of uh, living in that. Yeah. Um, and I am thinking about, you know, what other work could I do that mm -hmm. would help build on the work that we did? Yeah. And I'm living out and testing out a lot of the dreaming that you and I did, you know, that when I was envisioning what I really want, what I yeah. am doing right now is checking a lot of those boxes. Exactly. And yeah. so now that I'm there, it's like, okay, so, so here I am like fully present in it. What do you do when you're, when you're realizing you the dream? dream? What do you yeah. do when you're the dream? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's like being comfortable with, okay, now I'm here and it's not about, being perfect or being better it's 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 about being fully fully present and mm -hmm. like many people during the pandemic you know me and my family we endured loss we you know there were a lot of hard moments in the last uh couple of years and so i just don't want to i don't want to take any of it for granted mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's that's the time i don't want to take now for, for right. granted right. right and um i'm trying to think about that uh, I would like to also do that in the company of more women, mm -hmm. um, you know, who are asking really big questions about themselves and yeah. um, creating spaces that allow them to really be who they are in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been, you know, that's been an exciting part of, mm -hmm. of what's next. Yeah. It's awesome. So, you know, it's interesting because, of course, I know I was there with you on this journey, but it is just always so magical for me to see clients like step into the thing that they were not quite sure of in the beginning, didn't know if it was really going to come true. And now it's their real life. Right. And now sinking into the ritual of that day to day life and being present just allows you to understand all the tools you've built to now when this gets to be a little too normal, we can do it again. Right. That's the beauty of vision building is that. There's, you know, you went through vision builder, life mastery, like all of the ways that we create and practice. So Shirley, just before we let you go, what would you say to someone who is thinking about coaching, thinking about finding an integration tool for their lives? Wow. Um, well, I, I would say be really open minded about the package, you know, mm -hmm. that it comes in because I think this process with you, Coach Crystal, is is truly about integration and giving voice to all facets of who we are. You yeah. know, I love that I could have a space with you and we can talk about the spirit and the mind and the body, you yeah. know, and r reflect on the past, mm -hmm. you know, really think about just things that I think sometimes when people think about an executive coach or a life coach or yeah. a mental health expert, a therapist that needs to be compartmentalized. And I think the difference is that when you're really envisioning, when you're really dreaming, mm -hmm. you have permission to have all these facets of who you are be, be present yeah. um, in a way that I think is, is really uh, powerful. Yeah. So I would say be open-minded uh, be willing, you know, I think, I think Crystal, you, uh, you ask really powerful questions that sometimes can take someone by surprise and mm -hmm. not, in, not intimidating, just kind of opening up a, a facet of, you know, being, yeah. 
yeah. that maybe someone didn't think about and, and this is an intimate relationship yeah um and i you know i guess i would underscore for me uh and everyone should know i wouldn't normally agree to be videotaped and have a conversation like this <laughs> my privacy is very sacred yes um and you know i lived a very public life and continue to do so um but i feel like this is a space also where um if you show up you can count on confidentiality you can count on trust uh, you know, I think of brave spaces, not safe spaces, you know, mm -hmm. where you can really step in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm at the point where, you know, I think it would be great to be in a group with a group of people or even consider a retreat with a group of people mm -hmm. um, because I trust you to curate um, a group of folks who are very serious about um, this work with no judgment, no shame, right. you know, yeah. no compartmentalized expectations. It's like, right really just be able to speak your truth and um, uh, and be in the world, regardless of your history, your story, you know, what you think is possible or not possible, whatever your circumstance, um, I would, I would encourage, you know, I would encourage a lot of openness and a lot of trust building. Um, mm. The outcome is, you know, you end up being a little, you end up being more courageous and trusting in yourself, yeah. not just the coach. Right, um, right. <laughs> you know, or who's participating in this, which I think is really, um, really wonderful. And and Crystal, I think the other thing to mention too is, and you know, I don't know if it, this is your intention, but this is not like a one way relationship. It's very um, uh, reciprocal. It's yes. it's a partnership, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I would urge anyone coming into this, you know, to know that, um, you know, what you put in and get out of the out of, the, out of the partnership can be really, you know, could really um, be more than you ever imagined. Yeah, yeah. Well, Shirley, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for allowing us a little glimpse into your vision. It's been an honor to work with you. It continues to be. Um, if you are thinking about finding someone or a community to grow in, then you should jump over to stepwithcrystal.com, schedule your free complimentary vision call. I would love to talk to you about make, bringing your highest vision into your immediate reality. So if you wanna do that, jump over, and we promise you that in this community, you will gain confidence and clarity that will exceed your wildest dreams. We'll talk to you soon. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk later.